What a play is, it's Wool Boss Day up in this mode. Today we paint our sister of Avalorn up to the standard. Here are the colors you're gonna need in no particular order. Seraphim Sepia, XV88, Rackhearth Flesh, War Boss Green, Moot Green, Gilliman Blue. Uh, no, we use that. White Scar, Pallid Witch Flesh, Xandri Dust, Averlyn Sunset, and I believe that's it. Yeah. My Thrill Silver. There we go. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed it. We do the sword up, we paint the lining of the cloak, we do some highlighting and uh, this beautiful mane of blonde hair. We do that too. So thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you in the next one. All right, what up players? We are gonna get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go back over our girl's hair and we're gonna make it blonde. Um, so we're gonna take Morn Fang Brown. <coughs> and I love this, this blonde recipe. I found it on Daka a while ago and I did it for my dwarf blondes and and gingers like redhead videos uh, which you'll find in my in my playlists but I haven't really done it with the new colors yet so I was really excited to get started just haven't really had a opportunity and um, now I'm glad I do so this will make a really nice creamy blonde with good uh, like bone colored accents it's a good thing this sister of Averlorn head has this awesome braid so we're gonna use that for for a lot of it okay, don't forget to get the little bangs on the sides of their heads So along with the blonde hair, we're going to continue painting our girl up here. Um, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're going to take our Morn Fang Brown and we're going to go back over all the boots. Just make sure you've got everything there. I've, I've been thinking about something. I want you guys, I want your opinion. I've been thinking of changing the titles of these videos from how to paint to just calling them tutorials so people know that like if you're a new subscriber um, you might not know what a tutorial is or you might not know that it's just me like basically going from front to end with a miniature and sometimes it's in a game workshop color scheme but sometimes it's not and that can be quite uh, off-putting. War Boss Tay Green, oh yeah! My favorite color. Yeah. Get my Micron Art Pen right here. Gotta do it right. Yeah. So we're gonna take a big brush now and we're going to take our War Boss Tay Green and paint it on the cloak. So nice of you, GW, to name a color after me. Thank you very much. The danger of using a big brush like this wash brush is you don't want it to get into any of the other painted parts of the model. And um, I'm gonna say something else of note. No, probably not. It's new. All right, this uh, Games Workshop range is really it spreads really strangely sometimes. I find myself having to do more than one application. 
of things. Whereas in the old color range, you could thin something, thin down the paint on like your color palette and then put it on, and um, it wouldn't separate as much. You could get a lot more done in less time. So we're leaving the washes and the cracks. We're just trying to get all the green areas. Down here as well, the trim. much water in my green when I was putting this on the cloak. That's all right. Live and you learn. Um, we're going to do some little bit of highlighting now. We're going to take Eshin Gray. Alright, the next step we're going to take is we are going to take some XV88 and we are going to layer onto the Mornfang Brown. Now you want to kind of try to keep some of the um, Mornfang Brown still visible. You don't want to just slap it on the whole area of hair. But um, overall, yeah, we are covering, because this is kind of like the base of the blonde hair. I, I like that we started with Mornfang Brown. I think if we started with this XV88, then it would be a little bit too, too much of this kind of mustardy yellow. It's nice to have that dark brown showing every so often in in the recesses, but overall this XV88 is is a great is the great color that we're gonna build up from. Oh so excited. As soon as I'm done with this girl, I got one more left and and then we'll be ready to go. How are you doing with the focus there, Igor? You're doing just fine, master. that for now. Next what we're going to do is we're going to take, uh, we're going to go back over and make sure that all of our white is even with white scar. I'm going to paint it all over all the white areas. Yeah, so while I was getting ready, um, if you saw my Sisters of Averlorn, not Lothern, I don't know why I said Lothern, Sisters of Averlorn video, um, I had only really used the Gale Force 9 Spring Flock, but I, I, I did have a chance to go back to my other place yesterday and pick up the metal flowers. So I was experimenting with that. <clears throat> oh my goodness, I was experimenting with that and I thought, oh my goodness, it looks amazing with the 
spring flock. The two of them together look really, really good. Now here's a tricky part of painting white that I haven't quite gotten yet. The whites are too bright, so you're gonna need to t tone them down, and what you're gonna use for that is Venerisian Gray. You're gonna water it down on your wet palette, and with Venerisian Gray, you're just going to paint it into the shadows. You don't want too much because um, we're not looking to change the color, we're just looking to add some shadows to the white. So this part I'm, I'm still not really that great at yet. It's something I want to learn to do better. Blending uh, to create shadows where there aren't any. Um, but I feel like I'm getting a little bit better. Practice makes better than you were before you practiced, as they say. Okay, I think we can also finish up our gems. So we're going to take Mephiston Red here. And you're just going to paint inside the gems. Inside the corn red that we painted in the last episode. Take Wild Rider Red, paint inside of that. With the Wild Rider Red, what you're doing is you're going to make just like a little bit of a line on the lower, the lower right side of each gem, like this. Lower right side, lower right side. And then, if the gem is big enough, we're gonna take some white scar and paint a little bit of a dot before we finish it off with some gloss varnish. And then all of our gems will be done. So only do this if you see that your gem, like this one on the back of this guy's scabbard, has the space for it. Just want a tiny little white dot to show reflection. Lastly, if you have gloss varnish, you can use that or art coat. You're just going to run over all of the gems. We're gonna take Mithril Silver. I actually don't have any Runefang Steel here, but that's the, the current color you would use. It's the brightest silver you have. We are going to start highlighting up all the silver pieces. <clears throat> Scales here for the armor. The um, gauntlets here. I think we might have done this in the last video, so we're just kind of going back over everything we did. Now with the sword, what you're going to want to do is create shadows. So, um, like painting non-metallic metal. You go opposite, opposite. So what I mean by that is I'm gonna take some of my mitral silver. I'm gonna paint it up here at the very tip of the sword that is facing the light. And then here I'm going to paint 
and my tail silver in the center. And I'm going to repaint it here near the hilt. So we're creating, again, we're creating false shadows. Is that the new movie with Johnny Depp? Uh, no, I think that movie is called Dark Shadow and it was actually released last year, Igor, not this year. Um, well, I would know that if you let me out of the main cave more often, Master. I can't do that. You eat all of the neighborhood cats, Igor. You know that. It's not my fault they're so delicious. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking Girly Man Blue and I am just really lightly going over the opposite ends of what we painted with my Thrill Silver. Drakenhof Nightshade would be a little bit too dark. As a glaze, Girly Man Blue is just enough. We're also going to do that on the back here. Oh, early man blue all over the back. So we're just going to take our Mithril Silver and you're going to go and do the same thing. Catch the light, catch the light, catch the light. Simple effect, um, but for, for a beginner, it's very good. Alright, what can we do now that is not hair related? We'll take our Girly Man Blue and um, if you ever have like a hard white line, like say, look where the torso of this girl is, meets the upper body part of the armor, and just go into it. You can also do this with a shade, but I find the glaze is a lot softer. just for the hard shadows, the divides between materials. Okay, next we're going to take Averlin Sunset and mix just a little bit of it into XV88. So for this you're going to really need a soft palette. Soft palette, wet palette. That's a singer's term. Igor's been giving me voice lessons so I can sing pretty like him. So, you get your wet palette. Mix in your Everland Sunset and XB88, and then you get a color that's a little bit similar to the old snake bite leather, except a little bit more of a yellow tone. Highlighting up the hair. So the sisters of Averlorn. Um, and most GW models nowadays, characters with hair have their hair sculpted on rather than just being a big fat mop like they used to do in the 90s. And what that means is that as painters, we have a lot more opportunities to do these highlights. So you can choose which part of the hair the sun is reflecting off of and then highlight that area more than others. We do other cool tricks like that. Next. We're gonna add a small amount of Rackhearth flesh 
in the old recipe you're gonna be adding commando khaki, but because we don't have that anymore, rackcraft flesh is the closest thing we have. Highlighting hair is you want to start at the middle of the highlight you just did and try to keep in the center of it. This way you get very natural looking highlights and it doesn't look like you're just slapping paint on the model. It's all Optical illusion. You know when somebody's looking at your model from across the table, he'll see the, these individual strokes and uh, his eye will pick up the, the difference because of the shading we're about to do and because we're still leaving a lot of the color that we used previously underneath. It says to add denim stone to the mix, and um, since we don't have that, we're gonna use the next best thing, which is a little bit of Zandri dust mixed in with pallid witch flesh. So you're gonna take all these colors and mix them together. So that's why it's really good to have a wet palette nearby. Because if you're doing this all on like a napkin or on your painting table, then it would dry out almost, you know, immediately after you're done using it. So find the highlight color you just did, the step previous, and only work in, in those lines. I want the illusion that the sun is shining right on this center part of the hair where the hair bunches up right here in the center. So I'm going to pay a little bit more attention to highlighting that part right here. Now it says we're going to add a little bit more than stone, so we're going to do the same thing we did. Zandri dust and pallid witch flesh. Of course, if you have the old denim stone, that would work best. Next we're going to add straight white scar.
there's no real ratio on how much you need to add to each mix. It's kind of like to taste, you know, you do it until you're happy with it. So if it's not bright enough, add more. If it's too bright, then uh, go back a step and don't add as much. Great, like this head reminds me of a, uh, of a lion's mane. The great thing is that all this hair is sculpted, but you're really adding to it with these highlights. Now we're gonna let that dry for just a second. For our um, bow, we're gonna take some girly man blue and we are going to wash the bow with it. This is something that I found halfway doing my, my sisters is that uh, what this does is it really ties the white in nicely. It gives everything a very cohesive sheen and also makes it a little bit more dark, which I think is is better than bright blue witch fire. And there you go. Easy peasy. Next we're gonna take uh, we're gonna take a brush and some moot green. And we're gonna highlight the cloak. Starting with the ridges in the back, the highest points. Just gonna work our way around. You don't wanna completely cover all the colors before, like the Warboss Tay Green or the, the Wa Flesh, but um, this is gonna go on pretty, pretty evenly over everything. It might look bright to you, but we're gonna tone it all down in a little bit with some washes, or some shades, I mean. What am I talking about? Not the shade, the glaze. We did the shade. The face is the focal point of any model, so you want to make sure you s pay particular attention to it. Especially when you've got a model like a girl model like this, and unhelmeted heads of any kind of model. People tend to look at the face almost immediately, so you want to create a good impression with that before they start looking at everything else. Okay, so now we're going to take is it? Seraphim Sepia. We're gonna wash the hair. We're gonna wash that sepia into the hair. Oh yeah! Get first place at the painting contest. Now we're gonna let that dry, because that looks really awesome. And while we're waiting for the green to continue to dry, we're gonna do the lining of the cloak with wow. flesh. So 
So you're just going to take a thin line and run it down the side. I like to put a little elven rune at the bottom, so I'm going to do that now. And then just do the same thing, running along the bottom of the cloak. The thinner, the better, so use whatever tricks you have. Like, one of the tricks I like to do is after dipping my brush into the paint, I will wipe it off. And while I'm wiping it off, just kind of focus it into a, into a nice sharp tip. You just want to find your way around the legs. Between all the folds. Then if you've got an open cape like this on this side, you just retrace the rune. You always want to orient to the bottom as well, so you don't want to go flat according to the base, but go to the bottom of the, of the cloak if you can. If you're not sure about elven runes, just uh, look up Chinese or Egyptian characters. It's what they all seem to be like. Elven runes borrow heavily from those. Once you've got your initial runes out of the way, you're going to take White Scar and just um, tidy them up, tidy up the sides. Especially the bottom of the cloak. You'll notice that it gets all wonky in there, so you just want to get in there and you're kind of like stabbing in through the back to get there, but not, not many people are going to notice that, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. And there you have it, your little runes and the lining of your cloak. If you want to go back with Warboss Tay Green, that's a good way to add some highlighting to the line. Actually, I should have done this before um, so that if you make a mistake, you can clean it up with the, with the, with the white scar. Not exactly the same. I think I put a little bit too much at the top here, so we'll just there we go. 